Hey 207, um, I'm here to read another chapter of our book. We're currently reading The Absent Author by Ron Roy. Today we're going to read chapter four, but before we jump in, I just want us to review what's happened so far. So first we've met our main characters. So we'll, our three main characters are right here. We have Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. They are three friends, and at the start of our book, they are headed to a bookstore called The Book Nook. This is our setting, because they want to meet an author. An author is somebody who writes books. This author's name is Wallace Wallace. Now, we haven't met Wallace Wallace yet because something happens. Wallace Wallace, the author, goes missing. And these three friends, our main characters, think that he was kidnapped. They think somebody took Wallace Wallace and he is in danger. And we are going to start right there with chapter four. Alrighty. Put this down a little bit for a sec. Mr. Paskey shooed them out of the book nook and locked the front door. I have to eat lunch, he said. He scurried down Main Street. Come on, Dink said. There's a phone in Ellie's diner. Good. We can eat while you're calling. Josh stopped. Who, who are you calling? The airport, Dink said, to see if Wallace Wallace was on the 7 o'clock flight last night. They walked into Ellie's diner just as Jimmy Fallon and his grandfather came out. All right, remember in chapter three, they got a list of places that Wallace Wallace was going. It's called an itinerary. And this is one of their first clues that they're using to find Wallace Wallace. So they're going to all the places that Wallace Wallace was supposed to go on the list. And that first place that they're calling is the airport because Wallace Wallace flew in a plane to get to the book nook. Jimmy was working on a triple decker chocolate cone. Ellie stood behind the counter. As usual, her apron was smeared with ketchup, mustard, chocolate, and a lot of stuff Dink didn't recognize. Ellie smiled. Hi, Dink. Butter crunch, right? Dink shook his head. No, thanks, Ellie. I came to use the phone. Excuse me, but would it be all right if I bought you each a cone? Mavis Green asked. I was going to buy lunch for Mr. Wallace anyways. Gee, thanks, Josh said. I'll have a scoop of mint chip and a scoop of pistachio. Ooh, you like green ice cream too, Mavis said. She smiled shyly. I'll have the same, please. Remember, Miss Mavis, let's see if I can find a picture of her. She's this lady here. They met her at the book nook and she's helping them look for Wallace Wallace. I like pink ice cream, Ruth Rose said. I'll have a strawberry cone, please. One scoop. How about you, Dink? Mavis asked. I'm not hungry, thanks, he said. But you guys go ahead. I'm going to call the airport. Dink felt guilty. If he hadn't invited Wallace Wallace to Green Lawn, his favorite author would be safe at home in his castle in Maine. But Dink couldn't help feeling excited too. He felt like a detective from one of those Wallace Wallace books. Here is a picture. So here we see all of our characters. They're at a diner getting some ice cream. So we have Mavis over here. She's the lady who's helping them. Ruth Rose, Josh, and Dink is over here calling the airport. And Dink just said that he's sad that Wallace Wallace is missing, but he's a little excited because he feels like he's a detective. Dink stepped into the phone booth, looked up the number for New England Airlines and called. When a voice came on, he asked if Wallace Wallace had been aboard flight 3132 last night. He was? Did it land at seven o'clock, Dink asked. Thanks a lot. He rushed out of the phone booth. Hey guys, 
They told me Wallace Wallace was on the plane, and he landed right on time. So he didn't miss his flight, Ruth Rose said through strawberry pink lips. That's right. Dink pulled out the itinerary, and he drew a line through the airport. This is so exciting, Ruth Rose said. Now what? Josh asked, working on his double dipper. Dink pointed to the circle on the itinerary. Now we need to find out if a taxi picked him up. So remember, we have our itinerary at the list of places. The first place was the airport, so they crossed that off because he did get on the plane. So we know that he didn't get lost at the airport. So the next thing is they have to figure out if he took a taxi. <sighs> Lauren's taxi is over by the river, Ruth Rose said. Dink looked at Mavis. Would you like to come with us? We can walk there in five minutes. Mavis Green wiped her lips carefully with a napkin. I'd love to come, she said in her soft voice. They left Ellie's diner, walked left on Bridge Lane, and then headed down towards Woodview Road towards the river. Mr. Paskey looked pretty upset, didn't he? Josh said, crunching the last of his cone with his green chin. Wouldn't you be upset if you had a bunch of customers at your store waiting to meet a famous author and he didn't even show up? Ruth Rose asked. Yeah, but like, he was sweating buckets, Josh said. I wonder if Mr. Paskey kidnapped Wallace Wallace. Josh, get real. Why would Mr. Paskey kidnap an author? asked Ruth Rose. He sells tons of Wallace Wallace books. I don't think Mr. Paskey is the kidnapper, Dink said. But in a way, Josh is right. Detectives should consider every suspect just the way they do in Wallace Wallace books. At River Rose, they turned left. Two minutes later, Dink pushed open the door of the Lawrence Taxi Service. He asked the man behind the counter if one of their drivers had met Flight 3132 at Bradley Airport the previous night. The man ran his finger down a list on the clipboard. That would be Maureen Higgins. She's out back eating her lunch, he said, pointing over his shoulder. Walk straight through. They cut through the building to a grassy area in the back. Through the trees, Dink could see the Indian River. The sun reflected off the water like bright coins. A woman was sitting at the picnic table, eating a sandwich and filling out a crossword puzzle. E Excuse me, are you Maureen Higgins? Dink asked. The woman shook her head without looking up. Nope, I'm Marilyn Monroe. The woman wrote in another letter. Then she looked up. She had the merriest blue eyes Dink had ever seen. Yeah, cutie pie, I'm Maureen. She pointed her sandwich at Dink. And you might be... I'm Dink Duncan, he said. These are my friends, Josh, Ruth Rose, and Mavis. We wondered if you could help us, Ruth Rose said. Maureen stared at them. How? Did you pick up a man named Wallace Wallace at the airport last night? Dink asked. Maureen squinted at one of her blue eyes. Who wants to know? Because he's missing, said Josh. Well, I sure ain't got him. Maureen took a bite of her sandwich. Mayonnaise oozed onto her fingers. I know, I mean, we didn't think you had him, Dink said. But did you pick him up? Maureen nodded, swallowing. Sure, I picked him up. Seven o'clock sharp. I was there with my sign saying, Wallace, Wallace. The guy spots me, trots over, and I take him in my taxi. He climbs in, carrying a small suitcase. Kind of spooky guy. He was dressed in a hat, a long raincoat, sunglasses. Sunglasses at night. Doesn't speak a word. He just sits there. Spooky. Here we have, there's Maureen, she's the taxi driver, and here we see Dink, Josh, um, Ruth Rose, and Mavis, and they're all coming over to ask her some questions. And she said he, she did pick up Wallace Wallace in her taxi. Did you take him to the Shangri-La Hotel? Dink asked. 
Yup, those are my orders. Guys didn't even give me directions. But it would have been nice if he said something. Pass the time, you know? A lot of people, they chat just to act friendly. Not this one, quiet as a mouse in the back seat. Maureen wiped mayonnaise from her face and lips. Who is this Wallace fellow anyways? He is a famous writer, Ruth Rose said. Maureen my fell open. You mean I had a celebrity in my cab and I didn't even know it? What happened when you got to the hotel? Josh asked. Maureen stood up and tossed her napkin in the trash. I get out my side and open his door. He hops out, hands me a 20. Last I seen, he's scooting into the lobby. Dink pulled out the itinerary. He crossed out taxi with a thick black line. Then he drew a question mark next to the hotel. Thanks a lot, Mrs. Higgins, he said. Come on, guys, I have a feeling we're getting closer to finding Wallace Wallace. Marie put her hand on Dink's arm. Just thought of something, she said. When he handed me my fare, this Wallace fellow was smiling. Dink stared at Maureen. Smiling? She nodded. Yup. He had a silly grin on his face. He knew some big secret or something. And that is the end of chapter four. So we met a few more characters in that chapter. We met, um, Maureen, who is the taxi driver, and we found out a couple bits of information. We now know that he did get on the plane and that he did take the taxi. At the end of this chapter, Maureen tells us that Wallace Wallace had a big smile on his face, like almost like he knew a secret. What do you think that secret was? Why do you think Wallace Wallace was smiling? Do you have any predictions? Let me know. See you guys later.